So Lana, I don't know about you, but one of the greatest things that I think at the shelter is watching the happy stories unfold. Um, maybe start out not so happy, and um, before you know it, we've got a dog that doesn't look like a dog, looking like a dog, and finding a home, a forever home, being treated so much better uh, than, it, than where it came from, or whatever story it had. One of our most recent success stories um, is a dog named Benji. And um, now I wasn't personally involved with it, but um, I saw the pictures of when he came in. I, you couldn't even tell what he was or she. Um, just a fur ball, mass on his head, um, horrible leg injuries. Benji came to us as a stray running at large that one of my officers responded to and immediately um, brought him in and had him looked at by our clinic staff to be evaluated. I decided to foster Benji because like many of the staff members here, sometimes we just bring them home to foster. We recognize that they need a little bit more love, a little more time, and in Benji's case, a lap to lay on every single night. I had seen Benji and thought, oh my goodness, he is so cute. So I decided to bring him home as my first foster. Benji came in to us stray and he was pretty much a matted mess. We had to anesthetize him to even get a decent physical exam because he was in such bad shape. As we shaved him, we noticed a really large mass on his head that covered his eyes, as well as as um, Christina, my assistant, my clinic manager was shaving his leg. It was so badly broken and infected that we were afraid even the shaving it was going to rip it off. So we had to take him to surgery right away. And that's where our clinic came in. Um, we were able to, uh, the medical needs that this dog had were incredible. As we were examining him originally, we wanted to make sure we were helping him, not prolonging without giving him quality of life. And he never gave us any doubt that he wanted to keep fighting. This clinic that we have can take these animals that you think there's no hope, and um, now he's adoptable. So, and we can yeah. do it immediately here. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a veterinarian on staff, so we can take care of all those, you know, health needs that, that and sometimes life or death needs uh, at the time that they come into us. And it was one of my days off and well, we didn't have a choice because you're right nobody else would have done it we came in and we did those surgeries as well as fixing him and finished his groom so that his skin could heal and that's that's what we did for benji at home benji was such a little love bug it took him a couple of days to get up and running but then when he was going he was going when he wanted to run he would run but then most of the time he really just wanted to sit on your lap I totally fell in love with him and we bonded so much, so it was pretty difficult for me to bring him back to the shelter to get ready to go home. It was hard, there were tears involved, and I miss him every day still, but when I saw him meeting his new parents, I knew it was meant to be. He sat on their lap and fell in love with them just like I had fallen in love with him, so it was amazing seeing him go home with the people who needed him. When I heard Benji was being adopted, I was very excited. I saw him multiple times in the office, uh, hanging out with our volunteer coordinator. And to see him get adopted instills that our animal control did their jobs, our veterinarian and clinic did their jobs, and this dog now has a second chance at life and a better chance now because of us. Well, we're the McCoys from New Haven, Indiana, and we started out looking for a dog because the summer before we lost both of our dogs to cancer. We fell in love with Benji as soon as we saw him. He, he won our heart. When he was sitting on my husband's lap on the way home and we got to 69 where there's a Love's truck stop and he let us know he had to get out and go. <laughs> and he, he waited until we got him out and went and was ready to get right back in the van. But he was squirming. Mm -hmm. The thing that we all here at the shelter think of when we think of Benji is how much he tugs at the heartstrings because he came in in such bad shape, needing so much between um, the basic grooming care to lumpectomies to fracture repair from a trauma to 
somebody to love and support him because he was fearful for quite a while. And then once he got attached, he didn't want you to go. He was, he found somebody to love him and that's all he wanted. He is a godsend because he calms our nerves. He's, he's a, what, a comfort dog, and he takes Brenda as a comfort person. So they're good for each other. That's the main thing, is how, how well they have matched. I had brought a fuzzy blanket with me, and so I put that on my lap, and I asked Denny to pick him up if he'd let him, and he put him on my lap, and there we were. He just snuggled in, so he was home. The lady that was taking care of him, came in and says, he's your dog. <laughs> because usually she, he would whine and cry trying to get to her. And when she came in while he was on Brenda's lap, he didn't care. So I think he fell in love with her as fast as we fell in love with him. I was taught basically dogs are three-legged with a spare. The reason you're taught that is so that you know that if they're not standing on three legs, you keep looking for another injury. But it also lets you know they do just fine on three legs. They have good quality of life. When you take him for a walk, what happens? Do we? <laughs> <laughs> we can't walk very well ourselves. None of us can walk very well. <laughs> so when we take him for a walk, we, we're, we're all the same speed. He's, he's dragging us, but we're still all the same speed. He was definitely a very memorable case. He filled the hole left by our dogs that died. He is the best dog we've ever had.